Hi, I'm Barrett Henderson, and here with the uh, head coach of track and field, cross country, 2006-2007 Cascade Conference track and field coach of the year, Ben Welch. Ben, uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Let's start back at the beginning of the year and kind of recap on uh, the cross country season, another great one here for Eastern. It was. It was uh, kind of the culmination of a couple of years build up, so it was nice to bring home both those trophies again. We're actually the only team in the conference that uh, since we went back to conference uh, championships in 93 or 94 uh, that has managed to win both the men's and the women in the same year and we've done that half a dozen times. So that was the goal this fall and the, the athletes stayed real focused on that and did a great job of it. Now how high on the rankings did Eastern climb this year in cross country? Uh, the men climbed up as high as 12th. Uh, no, I take that back. They cracked into the top 10 for a week or two. We were 8th, I believe, was the highest. And the women, actually 16th was as high as they got this year. But that's all right, because like I say, we were last the year before both squads missed making it to the national meet. So to come back and be ranked, you know, uh, in the top 20 and on the guy's side in the top 10 part of the year was a very pleasing achievement. Now, before we look uh, at the indoor program, which is another very successful uh, track program here at Eastern, how long have you been coaching here at Eastern? This is actually my 17th year. Uh, 17 years as head track, or pardon me, as head cross country. See, this gets confusing. I got to stop and think about it. 17 years as head cross country, and then this is my sixth year as head track. For 11 years, I was assistant track as well. So. The indoor program, uh, I know a lot of the students here and actually a lot of the community may not understand we don't have an indoor track at Eastern. <laughs> yeah. You kind of make Boise your second home. Yeah, we do. Uh, when Boise State put that facility up over there in Nampa, you know, it's two and a half hours away. That was uh, a real boon for us because it's uh, so much closer than anything else. The next closest thing's up to the University of Idaho. You know, that's four, four and a half hours away. So. Having something that close was nice. It allowed us to do some things quite a bit differently. Now talk about the importance of an indoor track program for uh, a track and field school. You know, in the Northwest, indoor isn't as big as it is in the Midwest and the Northeast where they have a lot more uh, facilities because the weather's a lot harsher. Uh, but it's kind of growing because people are starting to realize that your early season meets, even in the Northwest, the weather tends to be pretty marginal. And the indoor venue gives you an opportunity to get good early season marks without risking weather-related injuries and stuff like that. The other thing is that when you're track only people, start training in October, it's an awful long ways to march to not have any kind of competition. So. And a lot of it is that the importance of indoor is that it gives them a mental break in the training loads, gives them an opportunity to kind of hone their competitive skills. And in our case, it's a pretty strong recruiting tool because it's another national championship opportunity. Because not all the small schools in the Northwest do it. Not all the Division I schools in the Northwest do it, and the NCAAs, let alone almost all of them do but not all of them. In our, in our conference out of the 11 schools, there's five of us that uh, participate in it. There's a six that kind of comes and goes, but there's only really three of us that take it pretty seriously. And it gives those three schools tend to have an advantage in recruiting. The uh, tra indoor program here at Eastern, there's uh, some pretty successful athletes this year. you got Mitch Wilhouse. And uh, you got a freshman local here. Talk a little bit about her. Melissa Besa. So uh, Melissa actually uh, set her 60 meter record. So uh, Melissa was a talented athlete in high school who had quite a bit of injury in issues. And we spent all fall just trying to get her strong enough to stay healthy. And it looks like it's going to start to pay off. So. In uh, about 2001, 2002, along in there, the college ranks moved from running 55s 
meter dashes to run 60 meter dashes. So it's a fairly new event, but even if you look at the 55s we had before, she's still one of the better short sprinters in the history of the program. Has um, she ever ran uh, indoor before I this year? I think she ran one indoor meet uh -huh. with uh, the Grand High, kind of had a club group going, and she went over to Boise once. So that's pretty impressive. Yeah, we get a lot of kids that have never even seen an indoor facility, <laughs> let alone competed in one. So that's always fun. <laughs> now I, uh, I joked with uh, Coach Wisenflu that she needed to rent out an apartment or house in Sioux City, uh, Iowa, where the national tournament is. For you, it's kind of like you need to go ahead and rent a couple places, including Johnson City, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tennessee. Uh, that's where the indoor track national meet is, and. Who's all going to be participating this year for EOU? We have uh, three multi-event athletes competing. We have uh, Chris Hoppy will do the heptathlon, and the heptathlon is seven events over two days. Uh, Lucas Omis will do the heptathlon as well. Chris will also come back in the long jump, which in theory will be right after the hep finishes on the second day. but. If the, hep, if the pole vault portion of the hep takes a long time, then he may be a busy young man <laughs> at the end of that. Uh, Chris is currently ranked third in the hep and I think sixth in the long jump. Wow. And then Lucas is ranked tenth in the hep. Uh, those entries are already in. The hep entries are already in. The multi-events are. They were due on Monday. The rest of the events aren't due until... Uh, the performance list will be posted on Friday, so we won't know where we're ranked in those until then. Uh, Casey Gillespie will do the women's pentathlon, which is five events in one day. And both her and Lucas competed in that indoors last year, mm -hmm. and both her and Lucas were All-Americans outdoor in the extended versions of the multi. So women do a heptathlon outdoors, and, a dec and the guys do a decathlon outdoors. So. The multi-event is kind of a nice progression for them. So, and then on the women's side, we also have Marcella Bosch in the women's 3000. And Sella has been to every national meet over the last three years except for one. Um, she's been to all three cross nationals. She's been to both track outdoor nationals. And she went to indoor nationals as a freshman and was a finalist in the 800. So this time she's going into 3000, so she has a lot of range. And uh, she just missed making it to indoor nationals as a sophomore last year, so she's been very successful in that respect. Uh, with Kayla Wissert, is a transfer from U of O that came in actually last winter after one term at U of O. Uh, she'll go into pole vault, and she's ranked pretty high, and she's knocking at the door with some pretty amazing potential. So it's very exciting. On the men's side, we also have Zach Heath in uh, the mile run. Zach underwent, a week after he qualified for nationals, he underwent hernia surgery, a sports-related hernia. Wow. And the doctor over there in Boise who the, does all those for the Boise State people said, you'll be back running full strength in two weeks. And I was pretty skeptical because the other two people I've had that done down through the years, it was six weeks before they were even training. He is good to go. It's absolutely amazing. Oh. So, I don't know the doctor over there's name, but tell you what, I highly recommend yeah. him. So, uh, and then we also have Adam Goulet in the thousand. Two years ago, Adam was an All-American in the thousand, top six at the national meet or an All-American. So uh, he's strong and fit, and if he can stay healthy, he's got a good shot at repeating that. And then we also have Mitch Wheelhouse in the weight. And Mitch improved his marks in the weight this year indoor. It's a 35-pound ball on the end of a little short handle. And he improved by five feet this year, five and a half, almost six feet. So, I mean, pretty remarkable year for Mitch. Not sure if I could even lift the 35-pound Yeah. <laughs>